we are used to see game engines in this way, where we have a sort of visual editor for which we can create visually our video games. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. What is under the sea? What are the components that give shape to a game engine? To answer all these questions, let's see how a game engine is made. A game engine is a very big software system designed to simplify the development of video games. It is composed by other minor software systems, usually called software components. In software engineering, a software component is a software package, module or subsystem that encapsulates a set of interfaces, functions or data related to a specific functionality. Let's see what are the main software components that compose a game engine. We have the graphics engine, the physics engine, the graphical user interface system, the audio engine, the input system, the script system, and the last but not least, there is the Entity Component System. Let's see in detail each component. Let's start with the Graphics Engine. What is a Graphics Engine? Graphics Engine is a software system whose purpose is to render 3D or 2D graphic scenes on the screen. The rendering of these scenes is commonly accomplished by using the so-called Graphics APIs like Direct3D, OpenGL, Vulkan or Metal. A graphics engine can be built upon one or more of these graphics APIs, even though only one can be used at each execution. Thanks to these graphics APIs that provide a software abstraction of the GPU or graphical processing unit, a graphics engine is able to render 2D or 3D models on the screen and it is also able to render practically any kind of graphics effects we are used to see in the various video games, like lighting, shadows, animations, and so on. All these graphics effects are achieved through the programming of the so-called shaders. Shaders can be defined as programs written in a specific language, like HLSL for DirectX and GLSL for OpenGL, that are subsequently compiled and sent to the GPU that will proceed to execute it. The rendering of the final scene is usually accomplished by the usage of one or more of these shaders. For a more in-depth explanation about this topic, it is possible to start to follow this series about how to create a 3D game and so a 3D graphics engine in C++ from scratch. At the end, a graphics engine should allow to handle the position, rotation and scale of the various objects of a scene. For example, here we have a scene with a terrain and many other objects like grass, trees, bushes, placed on its surface in various positions and orientations. Very well, let's move on to the next software subsystem called Physics Engine. The Physics Engine allows to simulate physics interaction inside the game world. It also handles collision detection, very important feature that allows the developer to define specific behaviors of the various actors or entities of a scene when a collision is detected. Usually a physics engine provides many kinds of physics simulations, like the simulation of articulations or the simulations of vehicles, to name a few. Now let's talk about the graphical user interface software system. 
The GUI system is that software system used to make the menu and the HUD of a game. Since the GUI system creates, for the most part, graphics elements like the various UI controls and so on, usually it is made upon the graphics engine, exploiting in this way its rendering capabilities. In some cases, the GUI system is also used to make the UI of the game engine editor, like in the case of Part Engine and Elux UI that we will see later. The next system to deepen is the Audio Engine. Audio Engine is another software subsystem that allows to reproduce sound effects and soundtracks into a game. It should allow to apply even special audio effects, like the specialized audio and the reverb that simulate the way in which sound waves are reflected by the surfaces of the surrounding environment. At this point, is the turn of input system, whose purpose is to manage the events generated by the various input devices like mouse, keyboard, gamepad, and so on. It allows to define action where specific input events occur. For example, let's say we want to fire a ball when a key is pressed. This can be accomplished by binding a method that we can call on fire to an input event like the pressing of the W key by using a suitable method of the input system that we can call bind action. Each time the W key is pressed, the onFire method is called, allowing the developer to define any kind of behavior. In this case, a ball entity will be spawned and launched into the sea. What's next? Well, we have the script system one of the most important game engine component that allows to write scripts or snippets of code to define the behavior of the various entities of the game world. One example is what we have just seen with the input system. Indeed, it is exactly through a script that we can actually access the input system to bind an action with a specific key event. In this case, we have a script that fires a ball at the pressure of the W key. A script should allow even to access the other various subsystems mentioned earlier. A script can be written in a specific programming language. Depending on how the script system has been designed, a developer can use two types of programming language, the interpreted one or the compiled one. When we have interpreted programming languages like C Sharp, Lua, JavaScript, Python, and so on, each line of code must be parsed by a virtual machine on the fly before it can be actually executed on the CPU. Then we have the compiled programming languages like C or C, where instead the entire code is, as first thing, compiled in machine code or in a format readable from the CPU, and then the compiled code is executed directly by the CPU. At the end, we have the Entity Component System, probably the most important game engine component. The Entity Component System provides the necessary functions to create the structure of the game world. This is usually accomplished by making a tree structure of entities. An entity can be defined as an empty box with nothing inside it. So how can we transform those empty boxes in something concrete, like the cubes and the various shapes we are seeing? By adding the so-called components. A component, as the name suggests, allows to extend an entity with a specific functionality. We can have a component that provides graphics functionality, another one that provides audio functionality, or even physics functionality, and so on. Substantially, this system should provide a component for each functionality provided by the various software subsystems we have talked about earlier. And exactly for this fact, the Entity Component System plays an important role inside the game engine, 
We could define it as an orchestra director, where the orchestra is the group of subsystems. So good, we have examined all the main components of our game engine. At this point, once those components have been designed and developed, how can a game be actually built? There are two main ways. One is to create a game directly through the usage of the APIs provided by the game engine and its subsystems, and so for code. This includes even the making of levels, the placement of the various objects in the scene, and so on. This is not so bad for some kind of games like the procedural ones, but for other kind of games where the levels should be created in a predefined way, this is not an option. For the latest case mentioned, it would be better to design and develop a game engine editor. In such a way, the end user can build levels easily in a visual way. And that's all. Obviously, this is a very high level explanation on how a game engine is made, but I hope it's enough to understand the basics. Many years have been required to fully understand what there is behind each of these subsystems and to currently design and develop them. But finally, it's arrived the time of the part engine editor development. This will be the topic of the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.